Hey everybody, I'm back. Thank you for joining me, I appreciate it. Um, today I am going to sort of continue on the path of making a file folder cover. Um, after I did yesterday's video for this signature, um, which I've dialed up a little bit, um, I started thinking about the fact that I'd put paper inside and fabric outside, and it's not really how I did the previous journal cover. And so I want to make one that's more similar to the first one I made and share that with you. So um, I know I'm going to use another kit for my next journal. I don't know how many signatures it's going to be, and I have always made my signatures first then made the cover to fit. So this is a little bit of a challenge for me. Um, again, something new. <laughs> I'm so adventurous. Um, so we are going to sort of explore that together. And I'm hoping to give other beginners, because I am so totally a beginner, um, I'm hoping to give other beginners some ideas and some inspiration and some courage. Um, there have been many, many people who have given me courage, but they are all very experienced people. Um, so this is sort of my way of giving back. Um, I can't give to those who have encouraged me because I have nothing to show them or give them or suggest to them. Um, they already have much more knowledge than I'll probably ever have. Um, but it's sort of a pay it forward kind of thing. And I think paying it forward is always giving back. So anyway, uh, so much for being philosophical. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of the mood I got up in this morning. So anyway, like I said, I started thinking about the cover last night. I did do some more work on it. This is the outside cover. Um, I added this because it reminds me of a little curtain. And these remind me of little windows. So... I did end up tearing this muslin that I printed on. I tore it in half um, and uh, I centered them on the other muslin that's on the file folder cover. I added these little fabric flowers that came on a roll from Hobby Lobby. This is some trim that I got off of uh, some fabric um, sort of placemat kind of things at a thrift shop. I don't know how old it is, but I love the way it looks, and I removed it from the fabric that it was on, and I absolutely love this stuff. Um, I use it whenever I can. Now, I did not sew it on. I glued it on with Fabri-Tac. These are also glued on with Fabri-Tac. These I did iron on with the Fusible Web, and it works. It, I, just, I just enjoy using it. It's smooth, and it works very well. Um, Yesterday in the video that I did, when I made this cover, I said that it's used in piecing. It's not used in piecing, it's used in applique. So if you want to cut something out and you want it to stick to your quilt, um, you iron it onto this, uh, onto your, you iron on, <laughs> oh, tongue tied. You take the fusible web, you iron your fabric onto the, the rough side of it, and then you cut around these. And then you can iron them onto a quilt or on a cover, on some more fabric, whatever. Um, so I could have done that, and I did think about that. I just didn't feel like fussy cutting around that stuff. But that may come in a future journal. Who knows? So I did doll up the cover a little bit, and I really enjoy it. Um, this is the paper inside. Uh, with the added strip of file folder in the middle, it is sort of being stubborn about closing. I may have to weigh this down um, with something heavy. And I have a, enough books. <laughs> I can put it under there and it would be flat in no time. Um, but I don't want to lose too much of the texture of the other things like these flowers. So I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, I could just put the weight on the center part but because this is not a thin paper it's not not I don't think it's totally a cardstock but it is a thin paper um uh, I mean a, a thicker paper 
I think it made the center way too thick. Um, if I was going to use this paper on the inside again, I might not reinforce the spine. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so it is sort of having a little bit of trouble um, closing. So today we're not going to sew this signature in. I'm going to save that for a different video. Um, but I am really happy with this cover. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to make a different cover. Um, I have another kit from Shabby Dabby Doodah. I, I just really like the subtlety of the kits that she makes. Um, the colors are very subtle. They're not bold and bright. Um, and she has really lovely images. So this kit is called... It is called Lavender Serenity Positivity Gratitude. I don't know if you can see that. If my the sun is not out today, I have my lights on, but the light is down here. <laughs> so if you look under uh, her Etsy shop, which I will link below, um, that's where I got this kit. These are some of the pages. I made a pocket out of one of the pages. Um, these are, and there are doubles of what I printed out. So these I backed with other pages on them. I printed them. I printed them with, you know, some of the sheets on the back. These I did not. And I have printed out multiples. So these are her, um, her background pages. Okay. So this kit has background pages. And it also has um, ephemera pages like this and I just love these little notes that she makes her her um, kits are done in a PDF form and I have had problems and it's again operator error has nothing to do with her kits um, with me printing them out the correct size so um, as you can see <laughs> these were failures but I'll use them anyway because heck there's always collage, right? And I did make a little pocket out of one of the pages. So when this is glued down to the sheet, um, it'll open up like that. But meanwhile, it is a pocket, which I thought was very pretty. I love lavender, lilac, purple, and this kits, and I love butterflies. <laughs> So there you go. So this kit really spoke to me. Um, this is some of the ephemera that I cut out. Um, there are some note pages here. Um, that's upside down. And then there are a ton. And let me tell you, I'm talking a ton of wonderful prompts. These are all prompts. Um, there are wonderful inspiring words um, thankful dance wonderful play go for it wonder motivated learn beauty I mean I didn't I, I didn't even count them there are so many of them as you can see they're all falling out here passion start joy so this would make a lovely things that make me happy. This would make a really lovely kit to give someone, especially for Mother's Day. Um, so I am going to be working on this journal, and uh, I hope that you like what I come out with. But meanwhile, um, what we are going to... Oh, there's even more in here. This bag is just stuffed full. There's little pockets in here, and bunches of little notes that you can use to tuck in spots um, and like I said I made more than one copy of most of these things but but the kit just a single copy of each one will give you more than enough to play with trust me so now I gotta get all these cute little things back in here because I don't want them floating around I have found that if I keep my items in a bag and in a folder, lovely journaling cards. I just love the sizes of these. And these are on uh, cream colored cardstock. 
And then these are on paper. And this is all stuff that you could collage with, um, all stuff that you can put on the pages, dress up the pockets. I can't wait to play with this. Um, maybe I'll do a craft with me. I don't know if anybody's interested in that. I tend to get very in my head and don't know if I would remember to talk, to be honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I like to put all my, all my bits and pieces. I have found that I do better if they are all in a little bag to keep them corralled and then the sheets in a file folder. So, um, oh, and so these are the fabrics that I pulled out. I don't know, I haven't decided this, oh, that's, that goes really pretty with that. So there's this one, there's this one, and there's this one. I like them all. Um, this might be a little dark for the kit. And this has a just, it's a little more bluish, which there is some blue in here along with the lavender. So I don't know. I may go with that one. But this one speaks to me for the cover, I think. So what I'm going to do is I am going to attempt <laughs> to um, do this on video. Uh, yesterday's I had to measure out ahead of time and I mismeasured three different folders so that just goes to show what I struggle with um, numbers measuring not my forte I, I am absolutely 100% horrible at math and I think I think something through and then I turn around and it's not right so um, we are going to attempt that today. I have a couple of other folders on standby. If I ruin everything, you won't see this, so it won't matter. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is this, this cover is pretty much good for one signature. One, you know, good size, chunky-ish, and I'm not done putting things in here yet, signature. This cover is actually going to hold three signatures, and it's significantly larger. Um, if I can get it. That's how much larger this signature, I mean this cover is, because there are three very chunky, if I can pick them up without throwing them around, three very chunky signatures going in it. So this is, and, and there's a bit of overlap that I probably didn't need. Um but it is what it is at this point because I really like the cover and I'm not redoing it. So I need to make this cover that I'm going to make today somewhere between here and here because there will probably be two to three signatures in it. So I'm going to measure this one and measure this one and do something in between. Um, this one is, is big, but if it sits like this and it has a tie closure, I think it's going to be just fine. But it is a little bit large. I made it too large. So I'm going to take these out. Um, and like I said, I'm so used to doing the signatures first, first, then measuring that this is sort of freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> and there's the difference in the sizes. So it has to be between this size and this size. Um, the height is, you know, there's not as much difference in the height. Um, because my signatures don't grow this way. They grow this way. So now, um, well, I have two tape measures up here, but I can't find, I can't find either one. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to use a tape measure. Um, totally not necessary. So the bottom signature is 15 and a quarter, and the top signature is just about 12 inches. So I think I'm going to make um, 15 and a quarter is too big, and this one is like 12. I think I'm going to make my next one say 13 and a half. 
And if it's not thick enough, because you have to include how wide a spine you want. The reason this one's so much bigger is my spine is like an inch and a half, two inches deep because I had so many signatures. Yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, that's the center. It's at least two inches, my spine. And it probably didn't need to be quite that thick. So 13, I'm going to make it 13 this way. And I'm going to make it probably, let's see, this one is nine and a quarter. I'm probably going to make it nine and a half. So nine and a half tall and 13 across. Remember that. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Nine and a half. No, nine. Mm, I think nine and a quarter tall. Nine and a quarter by 13. Or thereabouts. Because <laughs> nothing I ever do is exact. And I'd rather have too much and be able to cut it down than have not enough. And then how are you going to add to your cover, you know? I mean, I guess you could add lace or whatever to the edges, but that's not how I want it. I don't want it to look jerry-rigged. So something about these folders um, that I want to point out is where the score line is, the fold line, they don't meet at the top here. Uh, not every folder is probably the same. Um, and the extra score lines are on this edge, so folding it up here wouldn't, wouldn't engage these score lines. So what I found is that um, if I want to make this 13, and, and this is where I had problems yesterday was cutting it. If I want it to be 13, and this is the short side, but I want... So half of 13, 12 and 12 is, I mean, 6 and 6 is 12, 6 and a half and 6 and a half is 13, right? Yeah. Okay. So I am going to have to cut that right there. Hmm. <laughs> now I'm doubting myself. Um, I'm going to go for it. Okay, so 13. So let's see if I do this right this time today. Six and a half. Six and a half. And mark it at 13. Okay. So let's see if I can not mess this up, right? And I don't know why. This cutter I have a lot more trouble with measuring on than I do my old cutter, but my old cutter doesn't cut the heavy stuff as well. So I am going to put this in here. And I also think this cutter is not even. Like these things that you hold the paper up against at the top, I don't know. I just don't always come out with an even, an even cut, an even edge. I'm going to give myself just, just a hair extra. And hope I did this well. Okay. So that should be 13 inches across. <laughs> we hope. Hey, look at that. It's 13 inches across. And then it needs to be um, about... So your papers are eight and a half tall when they're folded. And I'm going to make this nine. Because I like to have just a tad extra... Okay, there's my there's my extras, and I'm not going to throw those away because that's going to be what I use to um, support the sides. So, and yes, I'll have to cut those and take my paper cutter out again. I know. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, and what did I do with my scoreboard? Yes, I put it up here because it kept falling over. So what I do, what I have been doing... Um, so that's the center, but what I want is I want to build up my spine. 
And what I have been doing, and I, I don't know if this is right or not, I take the fold line and I do a couple of notches right next to the fold line on either side. Of course, I don't have it on there straight, so now they're not going to be straight lines. But What else is new? Okay. I, I just sort of go hog wild because, really, you don't have to do that many. Um, it depends on how deep your spine is going to be. And then I fold it on the... I, I sort of fold every other one. Um... And I don't always have the best of luck with that because now it's not sitting straight. Story of my life. Can't do anything straight. <laughs> oh, it's just my own running joke. Sorry. I probably get tired of hearing that. It's just so true. Just can't do anything straight. All right. Even when I have straight lines, it won't fold straight. Don't you know? So I'm lining up the top and the bottom to get my straight fold lines there. Okay. So now I have a couple of fold lines in here. Um, if you put your edges together, your outside edges, and recrease that. So now I have a couple of fold lines. And so now I can do the edge reinforcements and the center reinforcements because I think I'm going to put, well, see, this is where I run into trouble. If I wanted to put paper on the inside, the paper isn't long enough to cover, so the paper has to go this way and then another sheet over here so I may do that um, but it won't fit unless you put it this way so it has to be like images that it doesn't matter which way they face if you want to use paper on the inside or outside um, because my cover is always bigger than eight and a half by eleven and I don't want to cut all my papers down that make my signatures I'd rather fiddle with the images here so I could just put these two and what I do is I usually meet overlap them just a bit in the center like that and then whatever you cut off up here could be um, could be used for collage or whatever And sometimes you're lucky and you can match them up like that. That's sort of kind of matched up. Sort of, kind of. Like that. So you can, you can fuss with it, but really you won't see the center here where you glue it together because your signatures are going to be tied in there. Sewn in there. <laughs> Okay, so first what I'm going to do is um, I am going to cut the reinforcements. And I'm just going to take my little paper cutter out for that. Right, go back over to the side. So I don't make my reinforcements that wide. Um, I probably make them about an inch um, and they probably don't even need to be that wide because your eyelet really I mean if I wanted to use this piece here I could use that because really I'm just reinforcing it for the eyelet but it, I think it helps to have the, um, the 
edge is reinforced, even though by the time you get fabric on the outside and either fabric or paper on the inside, um, I it's pretty reinforced. And I do make them just a tad shorter than the edge, than the, than the height of the, um, the, the cover. Spit it out, Martha. So I, I want you all to know by no means is this a tutorial. <laughs> this is me experimenting, learning, playing, um, trying this out, and just showing you how to process through things, um, or at least my process to get through things. And um, so this is going to be my, I'm making it an inch. Uh, this is going to be the spine reinforcement. Ah, straight lines, straight lines. This just ran over my thumb. We have established that Grace is not my middle name. And really, if I didn't want to use cardboard, um, cardstock file folder for the center, just an extra piece of paper would help reinforce it when you're sewing it. Don't throw any of this away, of course. This is all great for collage and journaling cards and other stuff like that. Um, but I have nowhere to put it right now. Okay. So, um, let's see, I need a surface to glue on. I don't want to ruin my, my desk cover. That's my problem there. All right. So again, I'm going to just lightly glue this down. Doesn't need a lot. And this video may have to be two videos because I'm not the fastest worker in the world, especially if I have to talk <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking, not really my thing. So, I mean... I can multitask in some ways, but because I'm still so new to this, I still have to work things out as to what I'm doing right and wrong. Now this is the glue that sticks like that. Now, um, before I glue this down, I am going to do some scoring. And my scoring on this piece is not going to be very precise. Just a forewarning. <laughs> I just score it so I can sort of get it to fold with the fold of the the center of the folder. Oh. Darn. It kind of went off all cattywonky sideways. Okay. And I just put all these lines in it so it's flexible enough to make the spine flexible to go with it. And then I just sort of um I just sort of work it so that it I know it'll bend. So it's supposed to be like 74 here today. Cloudy, overcast, humid. And then it's going to get chilly again. Spring keeps teasing us with a warm day here and there. And then it goes back into the 50s. I don't mind the cool weather. I just don't like it when it gets nice and then cools off again. <laughs> it's kind of a tease. So. So.
So I applied to teach a course, well, a class at the Fiber College of Maine. But this year they weren't really interested in journal making. But they have asked me if I want to do what they call an a la carte class, where people walk up to your table and you teach them to do something but it has to be something they can do while they're standing there. And it has to be something small that they can take away, um, a finished product. And I'm really kind of stumped on what to do. Um, I think I'm gonna work on this weekend some mini journals, various types of mini journals, maybe a paper bag journal, which I've never made. But I really do want to go and I want to give that a shot because I want to see if I'm even capable of teaching. <laughs> and um, I want to give people a taste of what might be available um, next year. If they are interested, they can request to have a journal making class. So I... Uh, I'm struggling with what to make. So if you guys have anything, any ideas of if you were to walk up to like an art craft show, a craft show that has classes and stuff, most of the classes are going to be fiber, like wool and um, stuff like that, spinning, weaving. There's going to be some fiber dyeing, some knitting, crochet classes. They haven't they haven't announced the classes yet, but we got a sneak peek of who was accepted to teach, of the the kind of things that they do. So, um, they have had like bookmakers there before, which is why I was encouraged by the the head of the fiber college to apply but um, I think because I am not experienced enough yet and I don't have any teaching experience and because of um, the fact that I've never applied before so my application probably wasn't thorough enough I figure that um, maybe next year I'll have a chance if people are interested in what I offer for the a la carte class. So basically the class has to be taught, like I said, I think I mentioned this, um, it has to be taught within about an hour. Um, people walk up to your table, the tables are outside, and then um, you teach them to do something. So what would you want to see at an event like that if you went and you saw someone making maybe some sort of mini journal or if you have ideas for other things I'm open to suggestions okay so I've got my spine in my spine support I've got my edge supports on and I rounded my corners because I like that effect um, now, I need my iron-on fusible web and fabric the size that I want to make this. So I'm going to use this fabric, and I, <laughs> if I mess this up, I won't have enough of this to make, try again, I don't think. Well, maybe, yeah, I think that'll work. Okay. So this has to be at least an inch taller and wider because I'm going to show you how I did my first cover and overlap it. So this needs to be at least, and I give myself extra because when I tear this, it may not tear and leave, it may not tear straight and may not leave enough enough edge so 
I'm going to tear this right about where that fold is. Hope it tears right. Okay. Yay. Oh, that's going to be nice. I think I'm going to like that. All right. Um, and I need a piece of fusible web, and I put that over here. So I need that the same size as this. So again, I did not... <laughs> I keep trying to get a fabric that has a right side and a wrong side to show you, to make sure you know to do it, to iron it on the wrong side, but so far I haven't come up with that fabric yet. Um, so this is about 15 and a half by almost 11. So I am going to cut a piece of this. So this is, I believe it's 15... This is 15 by 5. So I said I need 15 and a half, I think. Let's see. Yes, I'm a fumble fingers. Okay. Yep. But I am going to... It's okay if I have a teeny bit that does not cover the edges and I'll show you why because these are the edges these ends here are going to be what's inside inside here and we're going to cover those up anyway so it's okay that it's you know a quarter -ish inch off and then I need my pencil and I'm really used to working in a much bigger space than this. <laughs> when I work with with fabric and stuff like that so please excuse me for doing this in a tiny space and looking like I'm discombobulated not that I'm not it is sort of a way of life for me to be going so speedy ahead that I'm sort of but I want to try and get this done in less than an hour if I can and really show you how simple this really is. Okay. Alrighty. I need my ironing mat, which I did not bring over here. Uh, luckily, the room is small enough. I can just reach behind me. Okay. Not without some moaning and groaning, though. So I've preheated my oven, <laughs> did it again, preheated my iron. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hopeless. First, I am going to iron the wrinkles out of this fabric. And be ooh, because I do want it to lay smooth. That is important to me. Um, you don't have to if you don't care, but I want the fusible web to lay flat on this because if you get a wrinkle in it, once the fusible web's on it, it's not going to come out. And of course, there's a little fold on here where I tore it. Okay. Try and get these creases out of the center here. And one of the things that I have found that I love doing is I love mixing all of my past crafts with the junk journaling. And it's just given me such a thrill to work with fabric and beads and all sorts of things. Okay. So I am going to look at my fabric. I like, I think the colors are a little more vibrant on this side. So I'm going to call this side the right side. And this side is going to be the wrong side. Okay. And I am going to take my 
fusible iron-on stuff. And this is the glue side. This is the paper side. Paper side up, glue side on the wrong side of the fabric. And today I'm going to try and get it more straight than not, if I can. Not always my forte. And of course my ironing pad is not quite long enough either. And I know that my fusible web is not quite long enough to go edge to edge, but again, that's okay. All right, I think I'm happy with that. And I'm going to start in the center. I'm not gonna go from one edge because it can push everything the wrong way. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna hold it down and take my time again. And you can always fast forward through this if you want to. Just take that little line, red line at the bottom of your of your screen and put the little touch the little button and move it forward if you don't want to sit through this. I can't help how long this takes and I don't I haven't been I have done a few videos where I have edited them by downloading to my computer first, but that takes so long. And to be honest, I'd rather be using that time to craft and to make more stuff. So I don't want to take an hour to download it to my computer another hour or so to edit and then another hour or more to upload it to YouTube and I have to sit there and watch it because my computer will go to sleep and then it won't finish uploading it. So that's three hours just to, to process the video that I really don't want to take out of my day. I have other more fun things to do. So... Um, so just push that little button at the bottom and fast forward until you see me finish this part up. And if you watched my video from yesterday, you know I have to take my time and make sure all this glue adheres or it won't come off the fabric. And it has nothing to do with this iron. This iron gets really hot. It's a very strong little iron. I want to make sure I get all of the edges. Okay, one more swipe. Ooh, that's hot. Don't touch the, the part you just ironed. <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to go to this end that cooled off that I touched before. Oh, not enough space ever. And... It doesn't help when you have to go to doctor's appointments like next week I have to go to the eye doctor and I have to get my eyes dilated. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to do anything for like three or four hours afterwards because it takes forever that for that stuff to wear off. So far, so good. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh-oh. Okay. Try and go from this end. Oh. Yes. Okay. If I can get these two, maybe I can get it off in one swoop. Oh, or not. Okay. Oh. 
Almost. Almost. It's always a challenge. And that came off easy. All right. Exciting. <laughs> now it won't get off my hand. Okay. So now, here's my journal cover, my file folder. And I am going to center. It's really hard to do when... Okay. Let's try this. I'm going to center it on the fabric. And again, if your fabric had a direction, if, if you had a picture on here or images that have to be right side up or upside down and you want a front and a back, then pay attention to that. I don't. <laughs> Maybe that's why I do that. <laughs> so I don't have to pay attention to that and mess it up. Who knows? All right, so we are going to... do this. But first, I'm going to very carefully cut not up to the corner. Can you see? No, you can't see. Still can't see. <sighs> there we go. Okay. You don't want to cut to the corner. So I still have this centered on my fabric. I think it's mostly it's a little sticky. Um, mostly centered Okay, and I'm going to, and you still can't see. Dang it. <sighs> okay. All right, so we're going to do this corner here. I'm, I want this corner to be able to fold up, but I want some of this taken off. Oops. So I am just going to cut at an angle. but not too close. Yes, it will create some bulk if it's not too close, but I would rather have a little bit of bulk than to have file folder showing, and you can always cut more off. You can't put it back on once you've cut off too much. That's my story. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so can we see? We can see. I hope you've been able to see the other things I've been doing. I think I need to move my camera over just there. Okay, hope that didn't make you sick. <laughs> All right, so I have to put my ironing pad back under here because I cannot iron on my acrylic cutting block. And it's not really long enough to hold everything perfectly, but I'll make it work. All right, so I'm going to, because this edge is closest to me, I'm going to fold my corner in and then fold this up. And you don't want to push this up, okay? You just want to, and the good thing about this is this is pretty sticky. So it's really not moving. The file folder is not moving. I'm working across myself here, which isn't always the best thing. I'm just holding the iron there for a little bit to, to strengthen that and make sure it melts on there. And then you're going to make sure that you have this folded up. And don't go back and forth. Just hold... I'm pushing so that the fabric will pull up and be tight on the other side. And honestly, I should have done the other side first. So as soon as I finish this edge, I totally do this backwards. I should not have done it this way. So don't do as I did. But I'm going to finish this bottom edge because I started it. But I shouldn't have done it this way. 
I should have done the outside first. And you're probably all yelling at me. You dodo bird, you should have done the outside first. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to flip this over. Should have done this side first, but I didn't. But that's the way it goes sometimes. It's not a big mistake. It's not a mistake at all, really. I'm just going to make really sure that if there's a little bit of a wrinkle here. I'm going to pull that up because I ironed it from the other side. And I'm going to try and iron that out. And this glue should stick because I can still feel that there's glue on the fabric. Okay? Don't do as I did. Do as I say. <laughs> you should be ironing this side first. And normally I would start in the center and work my way out. But because I ironed this on the edge on the flip side first. And don't go all the way up. You don't want to. You don't want to this glue to come off. You need that for the inside. I'm going to work your way out. And I am going to have a little bit of a mess up there. Oh, and I ironed the edge like I told you not to. See? Oh, now I've made myself all nervous that I did it wrong. And I don't want to start this video over. So you're just going to have to work with my mistake. <laughs> like I'm going to have to work with it. Oh, my gracious. Oh, story of my life. Okay. I got so excited about having the fabric the right size that I started doing the inside and you're supposed to do the outside first. So I would start in the middle, the center, the middle, and work my way out. And I have my fingers under here to make sure I don't iron the edge. The edge that doesn't touch any file folder. I'm making sure I'm not Ironing that down to my ironing mat. But I do want it ironed right up to the edges. Okay. So that worked. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. Okay. Now we're going to... <laughs> Now pretend I didn't do that edge, <laughs> and we are going to put the corner in around that rounded corner and iron it down just a little bit, just to tack it, and then we are going to put this edge down as well. Just hold it there so it can adhere to the file folder. And then you want to do this edge before you get too far along the top. And just tack it down. And then fold the top down. I don't know how many minutes in I'm... Oh, I'm almost at an hour. So this is going to have to be a two-parter. So I'll do the inside in a separate video. So I will call this the lavender file, the lavender, hmm, I'll call it lavender, and we'll just leave it at that. And maybe I'll make a whole series on putting the whole journal together. Just call it lavender journal. I'm going to cut these extra threads off. You don't want those sticking out. Um from the, the inside either. Okay. So I have one more end to do after this. Get this off the edge. So 
these corners are already in, so I'm just going to fold this up. And what you're going to notice is there's no glue on this folded part. I'm going to put a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac under there and press that down. But honestly, if you're going to put paper or whatever over this anyway, um, you probably wouldn't need to do that. I just like to be safe. I, I want to be safe rather than sorry. And I want to make sure that everything is adhered down like it's supposed to be. So that's just me. Someone else might not do that. So just a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac under these edges. Come out, come out wherever you are. Here it comes. Not, don't goober it up because it, it'll show. Don't goober it. Don't, don't overload it. But put enough to hold it down <laughs> like I didn't just do. <laughs> okay. So you're going to do that and hold this down. Let it dry. I'm going to shut this video off. I'm going to upload it because my iPad won't hold two videos, especially an hour long. And um, then I will be back to do the inside of this file folder. Okay? Thank you for watching. Look for part two of this. And I'm going to call it the Lavender Series. The Lavender Journal. Thank you for watching. I'll be back. Take care. Please leave comments below if you like this. Please give me a thumbs, a thumbs up if you liked it. And I really appreciate you being here. Honestly, I do. It means a lot to me. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.